Well, here we are in the heart of downtown Providence. We are the Woonasquatucket River. It's just one block that way. And our destination is just up here on Thomas Street. Okay. It's pretty cold today, Jeff. Yep, yep. October's chill is settling on the city. It is, and it's a perfect time of year to look for ghosts. Oh, so we're looking for a haunted building? Mm, we are. The houses here are pretty close to each other, mm-hmm. just a few feet between some of them. Now, which one are we looking for? Okay, this haunt really sticks out. I mean, you cannot miss this house. Well, there's a white steeple Baptist church on our right. Yeah, right. That's not the haunt. Our destination's on the other side. Hmm. Well, that house sticks out big time. And that would be the place. Okay, it's a a two-and-a-half-story house, obviously somewhat old. There's some paintings on either side and in the middle of the second-story windows. There's embossed stonework tiles all over it, and it's painted golden yellow and black trim. Honestly, it doesn't look like any other house on the street, or really around Providence at all. Ray, this is the Fleur de Lis building, a place for artists. It's been here since 1885, and they say it's haunted. Hello, I'm Jeff Belanger. Welcome to episode 368 of the New England Legends podcast. And I'm Ray Osher. Thank you for joining us on our quest to find ghosts, monsters, aliens, true crime, roadside oddities, and all the other weirdness that makes New England so great. Most of our story leads come from you, so please reach out to us anytime through our website. We'll explore this artistic Providence haunt right after this word from our sponsor. The Fleur de Lis building definitely sticks out. It does. Now, here's a little more background on the building. As you mentioned, it was built in 1885. It was designed by Rhode Island artist Sidney Richmond Burley to be a working studio for himself and other artists. I don't know much about architecture, but for those who do, it's got a, quote, Norman half-timbered facade. Okay. It's meant to look like a European city home from the 16th century. It was built by artists for artists. In 1939, Burley's widow, Sarah Drew Burley, deeded the property over to the Providence Art Club. Burley was one of the big-time members of that club, so it makes sense. And the art club is located just a few doors down the street. Sarah Burley said the only stipulation to the gift was that the building would always be used as an artist's studio. And it's remained that ever since. In 1992, it was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. And today, they say it's haunted? They do. They say it's haunted by a woman scorned. Now, in my experience, Jeff, that's the worst kind of haunting. (laughs) Amen to that. Now, to find out why, let's head back to the year 1921. It's early October of 1921 here in Providence, Rhode Island. The economy is red hot and the 20s are starting to roar. It's a time for prosperity, a time for innovation. And even though the 18th Amendment was ratified last year and booze is now illegal, calm down, it's still pretty easy to find. Don't worry, I know a guy. While life may be a party for some people, it's not for all. There are tortured souls who are struggling for a variety of reasons. There are the artists trying to express what's inside of them. Artist Sidney Richmond Burley knows all about that struggle. Burley was born in Little Compton, Rhode Island. He married his wife, Sarah, in 1875, and that's when his art career began to take off. It took off because Sarah's family's rich. Mm. She could afford to bankroll his career, so he could paint instead of trying to, you know, earn enough money to eat. True enough. Burleigh studied art in Paris from 1876 to 1880, and then he came back to Rhode Island to work and teach. He's known best for his realist watercolor paintings. But he also occasionally works in oils, and sometimes he exhibits his drawings. Burley earned a notable reputation in the art world. His work has been shown in Providence, Boston, Newport, Pennsylvania, and the National Academy of Design. In addition to working as an artist, Burley serves on the board of directors of the Rhode Island School of Design, and he teaches and mentors there as well. And it's at this prestigious art school that Burley met Angela O'Leary. O'Leary was about 20 years old when Burley became a mentor to her at school. O'Leary also works in watercolors, and she's been known to model for other artists. Burley was taken with the beautiful young girl to the point where he painted a portrait of her. And the painting is gorgeous. Yeah. It depicts O'Leary in a pink skirt and blue blouse, hiding her eyes and standing in front of a gnarled tree. It's a beautiful painting. Yeah, it really is. So over time, O'Leary and Burley got closer. O'Leary even accompanied Mr. and Mrs. Burley on a trip to France. And she often travels with the family. There are rumors... What kind of rumors? Well, rumors that Angelo Larry is a little close to her mentor. Oh, those kind of rumors. Yeah, yeah. We don't know for sure, but O'Leary has spent the last 20 years being pretty close to Sidney Burley. She's modeled for him. She still considers him a mentor. People will talk. Yeah, they will. And over those past 20 years, O'Leary's been making a name for herself as well. Her impressionistic watercolor style has earned praise from many. 
One critic with New England Magazine described her work as having, quote, poetic landscapes, remarkable color quality, and great charm. And while those accolades are nice to hear for any artist, inside, O'Leary is tortured. Maybe she has a tortured artist's soul. Maybe the rumors of her love for her mentor are true, and she knows they can never be together. Maybe she's made bold moves and was rejected. We don't know for sure, but we do know she's suffering from depression. It's October 1st, and 45-year-old O'Leary is painting inside the Florida Lee Studios owned by Sidney Burley. But something's really off with O'Leary. Even painting, the occupation that's brought her so much joy her entire life, it isn't helping. She's despondent. She walks into the kitchen. She pulls the gas line hose from the wall. Now she's lying down and placing the hose in her mouth. Oh, this is awful. It only takes a few minutes for Angela O'Leary to slip unconscious. It's a few minutes later when another artist comes in to discover O'Leary's unconscious body. She's rushed to the hospital. Angela O'Leary holds on for two more days before she slips away. Breathing in the gas was more than her system could take. And that brings us back to today. Though Angela O'Leary died in the hospital, she basically took her own life at the Florida Lease House in Providence. This story and her spirit have haunted the building ever since. Sidney Burley died in 1931 at 76 years of age. That would be a decade after Angela O'Leary. And though the rumors of their affair have never been confirmed, from the outside, it definitely looks suspicious. O'Leary never married anyone else. She never had children. But she was quite close with Burleigh and his family. Yeah, who knows? Maybe there was an arrangement or understanding, or maybe it was platonic. We won't ever know. But some suggest an affair and a spurned woman who took her life because she couldn't be with the man she loved is the reason behind this haunting. Or maybe the Fleur de Lis house is where she was happiest, where she did some of her best creative work. And that's why she still hangs around today. So there's as many reasons for ghosts as there are hauntings. As a guy who makes a living in a creative field, I adore the working artist's life. I mean, the struggle to express yourself, but, you know, also be able to earn a living and, you know, eat. (laughs) It's a brutal existence, hoping the muse descends and gives you something with enough value that others will pay for it. It makes sense that creative people are drawn to other creative people. They get the struggle. For Angela O'Leary, the struggle was so great she took her own life. I have no doubt that's haunted every artist who has walked into the Florida Lease building ever since. And now this iconic building is a stop on the Providence Ghost Tours, and many locals know of its haunted reputation. And that takes us to After the Legend, where we take a deeper dive into this week's story and sometimes veer off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our Patreon patrons. We'd love for you to join our growing group of New England Legend insiders who are the backbone of everything we do. Our patrons help with our hosting, production, marketing, and all other costs it takes to bring you two shows each week. We appreciate them more than we can express. All we ask is three bucks per month, though some give more. And for that, you get early ad-free access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. Please head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. And to see some pictures of the Florida Lease House, plus Angela O'Leary, click on the link in our episode description or go to our website and click on episode 368. And of course, Florida Lease means lily flower en français. Well, of course. Of course. I took French one in high school. Yeah, clearly. We. Oui. Ray Auger. Yes. Yeah. French Canadian. <laughs> right. Which is like, enough. like France. Um, <laughs> so the, the tortured art, artist's soul... Uh, one of the questions you almost have to ask, if you think about great artists, and mm. all of them, music, painting, sculpture, you know, poets, writers, everything, musicians, um, they're all pretty broken. Right, and their popularity <laughs> increases if they have a short life. Right. If they pass 27, away. 27 years old, right? Yeah, you know, 27. You know the 27 yeah, yeah. Club, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Hendrix, Winehouse, Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a J- Janet, Jan- Janis Joplin. Joplin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Janis Joplin. There's something about 27. It's crazy, huh? So, yeah. Careful. Yeah. You creative. You wonder if that was planned by some after the first. Or the first like, couple. Like, oh my God, I'm going to turn 28 next week. I can't can't have that. <laughs> right? I'm at my it's peak. It's sad, but it's true. I'll just have to, yeah. And so, then, then somebody could be on top of the world with their art. Yeah. And they're still not happy. No. So... I mean, I, you think about it, like Kurt Cobain, right? I don't want to get too far into this. I know yeah, this, I is, this is a dark subject and everything, but so his whole gig was, I'm I'm poor, I have no money, I have no prestige, no one, I'm garbage, and I, I write this like angry grunge music to express myself. Mm. 
and like, you know, you know, forget the mainstream. Who needs them? Right. Then you become mainstream. Right. You become number one on the radio and you become all the things that you, you probably loathed and were jealous of. And now you're rich. Ends are meeting. Right. And and it's good, right? You have money to do yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. You you're like, oh, good. It's all going okay now. I I've I've got a place. I've got, you know, all that. And and then you don't know what to do with you yourself. You have added stress though. And you have a lot of naysayers and you have a lot of critics. And yeah. that might hurt too. Right. You know, yeah. because your art is your art. It's very personal to you. Right. And then you have somebody say, Yeah, but it's garbage. Well, right. I mean, and you're right. reading that in magazines, seeing it on TV, hearing it on the radio. Yeah, when you played it in a club to like six people that dug you. And like, then those six <laughs> people hate you. They end up hating you because, because you got popular. You got popular, yeah, right. Like, oh, Sellouts. You, you used to be cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh man, I yeah. can't make anybody happy. And then you have the other guys that are playing to those six people and then are so happy when they make, when they make it mainstream. Yeah. It's like, don't fault me for uh, selling out. <laughs> yeah. That bar was gross. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> You're kidding? We, we have a green floor. room now. Yeah. You Look at this. We're giving us M&Ms. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> ask the sushi chef over there in the corner how we're doing. You yeah. Know? Like, Not a tough life. We're doing great. Uh, no, I get it. And so on the one hand, I, I, I get that we have to say again, this affair was absolutely never proven sure. or, or anything like that. But from the outside, you she, can speculate. Sure. she was around a long time, yeah. uh, decades with the family, traveling with them and everything else, which either means there's some sort of agreement or mm. arrangement or, uh, or what, but it, and, and, and the, and the funny thing is, even if there wasn't an affair, I'm sure quite a few were accusing you of it anyway. Oh, absolutely. So you're doing, the, you're doing the time, yeah. you know, and like, even if you didn't- Might as the, well have the affair. Even if you didn't do the crime, you're just like, you know, people will talk, which is a bummer because, you know, um, it's just a shame. That, Sometimes it's as simple as it appears. That right. It's just a, uh, yeah. a woman who enjoys being with the couple. Right. And that's it. Yeah. And, nice and, and easy. Well, and she's got a place to paint. Right. And, you know- and She's that, taken care of. That works out pretty nice. And, yeah. you know, she's-, she's and, and by the way, her art's great too. Mm. We'll have links. We'll, we'll put some links up. But um, both of them, super talented. Yeah. They're really, really great stuff. I mean, I'm in awe of people that are visual artists. Yeah. Because I don't- I can't even draw a stick figure. <laughs> you know, like- You don't have to with AI anymore. Yeah, I You don't have to you. worry about it. I know, I know. You're but, a great artist. Some of the stuff I've seen you do- Thank you so for, much. Especially for the New England Legends yeah, podcast. Right, our cover art is, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's some help there. But but that's one of those things where, I mean, I, I remember being in college and we were working on like a magazine and stuff and I would watch the artists draw stuff. Mm. And I'm just like, how? How do you- Oh, I know. How do you do it? Yeah. Like I have- a hand and and I can have paper and pencil too and you can draw this thing that's just incredible. Could you ever do it? Never. Because I can't now, but for some reason in junior high I could. I could look at a mad magazine and I could copy not not um trace, but I could copy yeah. the cover. I couldn't do that. And I don't know why I can't anymore. Yeah. But I used to draw really well. I'd have to look at something obviously. Yeah. Um but uh after I can't do it now. No. I I do not have it. I wish I did. Mm. Um, I can paint rooms <laughs> with a roller. Well, that's art, it's sort of. Something. It's like, well, now the wall is blue. All right? I don't know. That's cool. Um, but it's a lovely shade, though. You picked out that shade. Thank you. I did. I, I went to the... All it's the little, very artistic. Yeah. Uh, no, I feel like I have an artist's eye, but I do not have an artist's hand. I feel the same way. You yeah. know? Like, I can see it. I can appreciate it. I can, I can conceptualize it. I can imagine what I would love to draw or paint if I mm. could, but I can't. I don't have the tools or the know-how to make it, you know, but, but I, but I mean, but I, I'm a writer I, and I, right. and I, and I speak. Different kind of art. Yeah. I can do it. I can, I'm good at different kinds of art. You paint a picture with your words. Right. Sometimes that's harder. Well, right. And that's, that's my, that's my ability. And sure. You were about to say, that's my gift. That's my gift. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody has it. I do. Th no, actually I take that back. I think everybody has it. They just haven't tried that. Well, form of art yet and i've trained mine for 25 years now. well that's true you just get so, stronger and stronger yeah. the more you use that muscle so to speak it, but it is a muscle yeah right and i'm sure it's the same for visual artists like if you don't if you paint one painting a year it's it's probably not as good as if you paint 30 right you know because you're trying yeah you just you just you get it down a lot of people don't realize that like monet you know there's yeah. more than just the uh, water yeah, yeah. lilies or whatever that one's called um these artists create non-stop Right. We just know the two famous ones. Uh, photographers. And um, let me speak for all photographers. Okay. Right now. All of Frank, them. listen up. Yeah, Frank, Tim, our buddy, Tim, <laughs> all of them. Uh, no, I've talked to Frank about this. Frank Grace, the guy that we do the calendar with. Um, so he said, you know, he's always loved photography. Mm. He, he likes to capture what he sees, and I get it. So when he started taking pictures, he's like, you know, especially when things went digital, oh, what a game changer. Mm. Because you need to take, in the, those early days, you might take, three, 400 photos to get two decent oh, sure. ones. 
And then as you get better, then you only have to take 100 right. to get one or two decent ones. And then as you get better, you only take 50 mm. because you just know like this angle never works. Right. Right. I've made that mistake so many times. There's no need to get this angle anymore. Mm. It doesn't work. But this one's usually pretty good. And you just start to know where you should be, what the light should look like, where, right. what's the best focal point, you know, whatever. It's, what and, aperture to use, even technically exactly. speaking. Yeah. Because you've made hundreds and thousands and thousands of mistakes. Mm. And you're just like, oh, that doesn't work. That doesn't, okay, well, I, I, the, the 20th time in a row that didn't work, it's time yeah. to stop doing it. And that's that's learning and that's getting better. And so now, yes, you can you can line up a shot. And I've watched Frank do his thing. It's, it's yeah. insane. Because sometimes we've, we've got to hit like four locations and we have only a few hours. <laughs> He, I've watched him jump out of the car. I'm idling. The door's open. And he's like, click, 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 click. He's like, we're good. I'm like, really? <laughs> Thank God for digital photography. And, and then he goes home and he edits and he cleans yeah. it up. And I'm just like, oh my God. Mm. Like, dude. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I hang out with Tim Rice a lot. And the yeah, same, he's same thing. thing, right? Where he's just like, yeah, I got it. And you're like, really? Because I would have been here for an hour shooting hundreds of those. <laughs> yeah. And I would have had two or three that look okay. And, and he's like, yeah, I did that. And he just did that, but 20 years ago. Right. Right. He, he already went through that. Mm. And so now he's to the point where like, yeah, I just don't make as many mistakes. Um, and, and I know what works and I know what I like and I know what my style is. Right. And that's, that's your voice, right? So Frank knows his voice. His voice is the way he captures images. My right. voice is the way I tell stories. Which is a gift, but he still trained himself to your point. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe any artist, um, is just born great. What about the guy that got hit on the head and played the piano? There was a movie about it. <laughs> Do you remember that? No. It was a whole movie about it. It won I an Oscar. I believe you. Yeah. Oh, God. I think he, uh, he was in an accident or something. Wasn't it like My Left Foot or something? No, that was Daniel Day-Lewis. Or was it the he piano? was an artist, though, I think. But it was a guy that played the piano. Yeah. Jeffrey something. I think that was I his know. name. Haven't seen him in a long time. But that was the deal. I think he had a, a, a traumatic injury. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he could play the piano. Well, yeah. So no. he didn't really have to train himself. He just sat down one day and was like, Ray, I'm going to get a hammer and a piano. <laughs> Let's test this theory. Let's test out. it on you. <laughs> <laughs> Punk. Anything? But you know, we uh, talk about this a lot. We use ten percent yeah. of our brain. There's yeah, so yeah, much yeah. in there that's not unlocked. Yeah. And I, a, a nice knock to the head might unlock something. So I give you a nice knock to the head, and you're like, no piano, but I I can play the ukulele now. <laughs> but oh. Now I'm peeing myself yeah, just right. randomly. Yeah. Okay. Let me try another hit. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to play the ukulele. I want to play the piano. Yeah. yeah let me try again. Give me another one. Punk. <laughs> oh no, no. Still no. Now I can play the saxophone. What am I going to do with that? Uh, never mind. Yeah, hit hit over here popular instrument where's the piano spot (laughs) more toward the back right wham ow okay there it is yeah uh but yeah i think we all have talent we just there's a lot of hidden talent so anybody that says i am not creative you are you just haven't found it yet i also understand that once it's not just your hobby but your occupation Mm. uh there's a whole different ball game now because you have to succeed or you starve right and i know that's a lot of pressure i mean because i've felt that pressure Mm. where like this is what i've been doing full-time for 20 years and and there's days where you're like, I have to be good enough because I've got a family that depends on me. And it's hard to force creativity. You know yeah. what I mean? Like a lot of it for a lot of artists, it, it comes in spurts and um, it doesn't always hit you. It could be weeks. Right. You could have that writer's block, right? Have you have you no. experienced that? You don't. And, and I'll tell you why. Because when I work in nonfiction, like on any given day, there's like five, six stories I want to get to. And so um, there's well, always... So that's a matter of research, so, right? So part of it is like researching it and understanding it and then how you tell it. That's the creative part. Right. And that, that will come in spurts. Often when I'm doing something else, like you'll be like literally cutting the lawn or something and you'll be like, that's how I start the story. I got it. Right. You start here. That's the way. So in. it doesn't always hit you immediately. Right. Yeah. But you're doing nonfiction, but still you right. need a creative component to that. There's stuff I can always work on until the inspiration ah, part gotcha. hits. So I'm putting pieces together. And then, you know, when the muse arrives, I can be like, oh, that's where we start. We start here. We go there. We end here. Got that's it. That's interesting. Yeah. That, I mean, that's for me. That's yeah. how it works. But I, but there's always something I can be working on. There's no blueprints. No. Everyone's different. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so that's it. But I, I will say this. If you're a creative person and you sit around waiting for the muse, uh, you could wait a very long time. It's better to just get to work. Right. Yeah. Now, before we go, please make sure that you subscribe to the New England Legends podcast because it's free wherever you get your podcasts. The more our community grows, the more people who share these weird stories and we'll never run out of wicked, strange stories for you. Please also post a review for us, especially on Apple Podcasts. Those reviews really help others find us. We'd like to thank our sponsors and thank you to our Patreon patrons. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think. 